Hello, everyone, and welcome back to CRE Power Hour. I am Stephanie Gillison and my fabulous co-host, Lisa Marie Wan. You've heard her talk about CCIM education, and that's where she is all week. So I get the privilege and honor alone today to interview Ben Reinberg, who I'm thoroughly excited about because this is the first time we've actually had a commercial investor entrepreneur on this show, Ben. We've had all kinds of people that specialize in, in one asset class or another. We've had brokers, we've had coaches, we've had architects, you name it, but you are our first buyer. And wow, what you have done in your 30 year span of being in commercial real estate is mind boggling. 500 plus million dollars worth of assets across this country. Yeah. And that's, that's just, yeah. our, that's just our current portfolio. I mean, obviously we've done billions of dollars of deals over, a span and we've sold a lot. And so, yeah. you know, we're currently building back up our portfolio and getting into different asset classes. But thank you, Stephanie, for having me. I'm, I'm sad that Lisa Marie's not here, but I know it. We'll have to do this again. I guess. We will, obviously, because I know this is going to be so good and it's it, it's going to be a different, um, you know, conversation than what our listeners and our audience is usually used to. And that's what I love about this, because, you know, you got started in commercial real estate at 24 years old, but let's go back to that. You, you didn't start, you didn't wake up and say you're an entrepreneur. You actually had the corporate path first, right? Yeah. I mean, when I started, um, I'm a CPA. Most people don't realize that Stephanie is that I am a CPA and it's been very well served in my career to have that backing because as everyone knows, when you own commercial real estate, taxes and tax strategy becomes very important for your investors as well as for yourself. And so to have that foundation was really important. I have to, I have to tip my hat to my mother. My mother was a very big impact on me starting my own business. Uh, she also encouraged me to work for an accounting firm and get my feet wet. It was a recession in 1992 when I graduated from Indiana University. I am a fellow Hoosier for anyone out there listening. I went to the Indiana School of Business and it was a great education. I was very privileged. I got to go to college and at the time, especially in the 90s. And what I learned was I needed to get a job, get the foundation, learn no matter what. I went to go work for a small accounting firm. The managing partner, God rest his soul, is no longer with us. And he uh, was big in the entertainment industry. And so for me, how I got started was I was on, I, I did a lot of tax returns all over the country. And I was the youngest associate they ever hired. I mean, I was probably like 15 years younger than everyone. I was like yeah. a baby in this firm. <laughs> and so it was weird. Like I bring my lunch and stuff and I didn't have money. I think my starting salary was maybe 28 or 30,000, which was a ton of money back in the nineties. I was like wealthy, could buy a car. I was, I was rolling. And so I went on audits and, and, and met clients. And so I was in an audit in Manhattan at a billionaire's office. They were best friends growing up, the managing partner and him and huge client of ours. I mean, just enormous. And I was very fortunate. I was young. I was like 22, 23 years old, just out of college. I got to sit with him and talk to him and have dinner, Stephanie, like multiple times. Oh, that's right. And, and it's who you know and how you absorb information, who you surround yourself with. Well, he said a lot of interesting things to me and I learned a lot and I took notes once in a while to be able to kind of look back and absorb what he said. And what one of the things he said to me was, you're really not much of an accountant. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, you're really more of an entrepreneur. You got to know me for a few weeks. And being the brilliant man he was, he could read the room and he could read me. And he mm -hmm. said, you're not going to last in accounting. And I said, really? He goes, yeah, you should start looking for what is your career in life. And so then it was, and I tell this story with a guest um, who was on my show. Her name's Sharon Lecter. For everyone who doesn't know, she wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad with Robert Kiyosaki. She was the key to that book. And so Sharon Lecter is a dear friend of mine. And uh, she came on my new show, which is coming out, my new TV show, which I'm really excited about. And so Sharon... Um, wrote this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And to me, I bought it off an infomercial. And I explained this story on my show when she came on. And it really had a tremendous impact on me because it said, you know, buy assets to produce wealth. That's how you produce, get wealthy. 
And in Chicago, we have some of the biggest icons in commercial real estate, where it's the Pritzkers, the Crown, Sam Zell. I mean, th there's a list of 500 you could name. that are just incredible, talented people in commercial real estate in Chicago. And that was a good breeding ground for me. To I now live, you know, out in Orange County, California. I sit in Newport Beach in our West Coast office. Our headquarters are still in Chicago for Alliance. However, being around most of my career with Chicago influencers in commercial real estate, it was helpful to me because it pushed me, inspired me, it learned best practices, great systems and processes, how to negotiate, how to deal with sharks, which I got thrown in the water and dealt with. Once I became a principal, I was a little bit unique and uh, anomaly. I, I I became a principal when I was 23, 24. And how did you do that, Ben? I mean, how does a 23 year old on a $28,000 a year salary as an accountant do that? Because I was, I wasn't like educated. Like I didn't have the internet prevalent around me. Stephanie didn't know any better. I, I said, I didn't realize like you can get into brokerage. I didn't realize there was leasing investment sales. I didn't understand it until I got into it. Yeah. So I had someone from the West coast at the accounting firm. It was a client of ours. He helped me and he kind of gave me some guidance and gave me some advice. And so the first deal I did was an industrial deal in a sub market of Chicago. And it was an incredible deal. The first deal was two tenant industrial, the first week I lose one of the tenants, 45% moved out. I mm. bought it from two Titans in the business. They were huge home builders, very well known, also in the commercial real estate space in Chicago. And it was a great lesson for me. I learned how to negotiate. I learned how to negotiate a credit I need for the roof and some of the structure. Stephanie, I learned so much from that deal. I could reflect back. And I then sold it three years later for a tremendous profit. And that's what catapulted me. And what I learned was I took a 210 building to a 310 building. I increased rents. I did improvements and I sold the building myself. I wanted to learn how to sell a piece of commercial real estate. So I said, well, I'm going to sell it. Well, there was a guy from San Diego that launched a company called RCM at the time. It was the first mm -hmm. all war room, a guy named Steve Alter. And I was one of his first clients. And so I did that. And that was the way I learned how to list it and sell it. Now, like there's Crexy and CoStar and LoopNet and you name it, all these services everyone uses that they probably are aware of. And I learned how to sell and I learned how to negotiate and I sold it for a great profit. I was the broker of record. Okay. It's the only time I've ever brokered something in my, in my uh, commercial life. And it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about the process. It taught me about it's a numbers game and you have to create abundance. And uh, it was a great deal in catapulty. And so we built millions of square feet of office and industrial around the United States. And we own uh, office, industrial, and retail is, is my bailiwick. And then this year, we're looking at exploring and opening a new division for multifamily. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity in multifamily. So we're exploring that right now. And we're excited. I'm in the prime of my career. I'm For everyone who doesn't know, I'm 54 years old. You can follow me on social media. I'm all over social media. You can follow my podcast as well. I'm very open how I do business, how I teach people. Um, I have a lot of folks in commercial real estate, Stephanie, that just reach out to me, direct messages and ask me questions. I've yeah. had people here in Orange County that I've had lunch with that help. I love helping people. I feel that the older generation in our business didn't have that mindset. They kind of said, Ben Reinberg, get in the water and go swim yourself with the sharks and let's see if you survive. And I did. And I do, don't regret that. I actually am grateful for the people that did that for me because I would not be the man I am today, Stephanie, in this business if I didn't get pushed in uncomfortable situations. And so for everyone out there that really want to understand, like they always ask me, like, how do I grow? How do I grow in the business, commercial real estate? How do I grow in life? How do I grow relationships? You have to be uncomfortable to grow. That's so true. So, I love that. Yes. And I do that every single day. I do something where I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. So for example, you and I have never met. Okay. And I'm an introvert. Now I'm comfortable because I do a lot of speaking and stuff, but back in the day, that wouldn't be comfortable for me. And yeah. so for me, I've gotten comfort level to do it, but it's a new experience for me. So every day I have new experiences and I push myself to the limits and that allows me to continue to grow. 
And so for me, it's important that I surround myself with people that want to grow. So for everyone out there is when you want to continue to improve and grow in any industry, whether it's commercial real estate or you go on to another industry, surround yourself with people that are growth minded yeah. and, and work on yourself to continue to grow. And a lot of people ask me, it's like they want to know more about just commercial real estate because I talk about mindset. I talk about growth. I talk about my health. All these things are a holistic approach, Stephanie, that allow me to become the person I am and allow me to create impact, mm -hmm. benefit my employees and my leadership team and all our resources around us. So growth is a very important term to me as well as value. How can I offer value? And a lot of that I call them kids that work for me because they're younger. Cause I'm now the old, I'm now the old guy. It's kind of a running joke, but the kids that work for me. Okay. And I mean that with love because some are in their forties and thirties and whatever, twenties right. is I always say to them, I said, every interaction, whether you're in acquisitions, dispositions, asset management, property management, leasing sales, whatever you do in commercial real estate, every interaction you have offer value. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, why would I do that? You do that because that's how you build rapport. That's mm -hmm. how you create deep root relationships. And it's why when I come on the show, your show, which is a great show, CRE Power Hour, for everyone that doesn't know this show, is I'm here to offer value. And what does that do? It provides opportunities for me and my company. It, it allows impact. And so when I walk off this show, if I know I impacted one person, in your audience, I did my job. It was and worth it. I do that to my employees. I do that to our resources. I do that to even if anyone out there you want to know if I'm at Starbucks and the barista is uh, working with me to, for my order, I treat her with kindness and I treat her in a way of where can I impact her and create value. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, the universe rewards you for for those efforts you do. And that's what I've I've worn. And so. You know, I have a saying, the real estate gods reward you for hard work, persistence, dependable, integrity, and all these things matter. And so for your younger listeners out there, when they say, well, what's the secret? How do I become a principal? How do I own all this real estate and, and do all these things? It starts with you. Mm -hmm. It starts with creating the best version of you. And when you can do that, you can then impact people around you. that are going to want to do business with you, are going to sell deals. Uh, they're going to throw money at you. And that's been just the story of my career. And it doesn't stop. Like you just don't stop being that person, you know, and, you know, people use the word uh, authenticity out there, right? Stephanie, it's like a big mm -hmm. word that everyone throws around, but I don't think people, a lot of people really understand it. What to me, it really means is be your true self, who you are. You know, it doesn't matter how much real estate I own. It doesn't matter the accolades, rewards, whatever it is. I'm still the same Ben Reinberg who was that kid in the guy's office on the audit. And and so, you know, that person never leaves me. That's but right. how but how you manage your emotions and how you deal with people and how you grow and how you develop your expertise, that's on you. You know, everyone everyone tries to point the finger, Stephanie, at everyone else. That's right. But if you want to be successful in commercial real estate, Point the yeah. finger at yourself. Look at yourself. Look at the guy. Yeah. Look at the man or woman in the mirror and say, how do I continue to improve? And so, and it's an evolution. You know, I've been fortunate enough to have great mentors in all different uh, industries around the world. I've invested in myself. I am big proponent of personal development. Uh, I meditate twice a day. I work on myself because I know that people depend on me, but I wouldn't have it any other way as a leader. And so if you want to improve your leadership, skills work on yourself and that will help you lead uh great people that will create an impact in what you want to do and the more people you serve the more money you'll make out there and that's yes. just a little tip that you should be observing instead of you know worrying about yourself worry about some other folks work on yourself okay that's important but just keep pushing forward and in this business and I'll tell you, Stephanie, it's really important. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not. You know, a kind of, look at last year. Okay, we talked yeah. about a little bit. But I mean, perfect segue. 22 to 23, we're down 65% in sales transaction and commercial real estate. 
I've never seen that in my career. And I've been some through some crazy cycles. And so for me, when I look at that, it's like it's a cleansing that goes on our business. So if you can survive um, and just keep pushing forward and do what you can and, you know, maybe button up the hatches a little bit, be more conservative with your money. If you're a broker out there listening or you're an architect or you're in the service business, whatever it is, and business is down, it will come back. It's going to come back this year. Oh, next year will be a lot better. Uh, and they're going to, they're, you know, we have an election year going on. We're going to keep this economy floating together and there'll be deal volume happening. This year will be a much better year than 2023. Yeah. 2023 was really interesting to me with the amount of deal volume down. And it really, it worried people. I was getting calls from brokers like, what do you guys do it? I'm like, we might not buy a deal this year and that's okay. And it's because we're not going to buy a deal, just buy a deal. It's not prudent for our investors because, you know, we have high net worth of credit investors and family offices that invest with us all over the world. And so for us, being a good fiduciary of capital is you have to make the right decisions. They come first. And so when you're in a market that's not as uh, um, opportunistic as we like, and what's interesting is a lot of the younger generation probably is listening to the show. They got involved in commercial real estate when the market was hot. Cap rates right. were low. Money was abundant. Interest rates were low. They haven't been through a cycle. So right. they're seeing something that is very unique to them, Stephanie. And so part of that is, wait a minute, not, not everything is low interest rates and things just keep humming along. Not It's a cyclical business. And so people always ask me, like, what's important? The ability to hold. Having mm -hmm. the ability, ability to hold, ability to hold, ability to hold. I say it all over social media. It's not about location. It's the ability to hold. And for brokers out there listening, if, especially in your investment sales, is underwriting the proper real estate fundamentals. It's not a cap rate equation. Everyone throws around cap rate. And I did a reel on this recently. I hear this term cap rate, cap rate, cap rate. People don't understand what that really means. They don't understand how to underwrite commercial real estate because they're not on the principal side. And so what's important, Stephanie, is you need to understand the real estate fundamentals, such as vacancy rates, absorption rates, what's market rent, what's the cost per square foot, what's the ingress ingress for this property, how many parking spaces do I have, what's the construction, what's the credit worthiness of the tenant or tenants in the building. The list goes on and on. And so when you really look at a deal, whether it's long-term or short-term type leasing, you have to look at those fundamentals to see why are our tenants there? What's the supply and demand? What's the barriers to entry? Are there, like you know, being part of land equations, are there barriers to entry where maybe a new building can be constructed near me and start competing? We've seen that. We're seeing that right now on some of our properties that there's some construction that's going to be happening in a couple of years from now. You know, especially being medical office experts, one of our niches around the country we're seeing some hospital systems that are going to start spending money. Well, they're going to compete with maybe a building we have. So mm -hmm. these are the these are what changes values in our proper valuations, not just throwing a number at a cap rate, a percentage, and saying, well, the building down the street sold for a seven cap. So this it's not proper analysis. So exactly. I encourage everyone, like, you know, thank you, Lisa Marie, for setting. <laughs> path of what CCIM is. That's a great class. I never did that. I did my own MBA by just being involved in business. Right. But I suggest people that want to learn proper underwriting, CCIM is a really good tool because it gives you the foundation of what are the fundamentals and what do I need to look for? So definitely think that's a great idea to do for all of you out there. Absolutely. Ben, I want to touch on something because, you know, office is one of your, you know, asset classes that you all are investing in, but you're specific to medical or all office because office is doing some crazy stuff across this country as we've it seen. Is. Yeah, it's a great question. I appreciate that because when I look back at my career, we've owned office campuses and towers. I thought that's where my career was. I was a big fan of Sam Zell from Chicago and he was one of his companies was Equi office and I was a big fan of his. And I said, that's what I want to do. I think it's cool. You look behind me and you see this office towers. I mean, it was stuff like that, that we owned around yeah. the country. And once we saw that suburban office wasn't as need, we saw that they did a lot of tents in need as much office space. We saw 08 and 09 happen with that deep recession. 
And we said, office is really not the avenue to go. And so we sold off a lot of what we had in office. And we said, okay, we're not going to buy a suburban office. Maybe CBD type office we'll look at. And so 20 years ago, we decided to buy a medical office. Now, Barack Obama uh, was in office and he was talking about socialized medicine and it scared a lot of people. And I looked at it and I said, you know, maybe it's it's could impact insurance and this and that. But at that day, the human body is never going out of style, Stephanie. Right. So I said, why would we not? Women are still going to have babies. Uh, people are going to have gastro issues, neurology, orthopedic. More people are working out and dialysis. And so we started looking at all these. And then plastic surgery came in, surgery centers and emergency rooms and hospitals. And all these niches started to develop over the last 20 years. And so we doubled down and got heavily involved in the space. And it was a great move at the time. And so part, part of why I do, and people call me a futurist, because that's what I do. I look for new niches to get involved in. And that's why I've been outstanding at doing in my career is being ahead of the curve. That's and great. so for us, medical office has been wonderful. And eight years ago, Stephanie, uh, I got a call from a friend of mine who was a broker. And he said, Ben, why are you not buying veterinary in office? I said, what do you mean? He's like, more people are buying pets. Uh, and it's similar to medical office. And I think you really need to look. And he was absolutely right. We learned, we grew, and we understood the business. And today we're buying and owning great met veterinarian clinics and surgery centers and horse and cattle and dogs and reptiles and you name it are part of these properties of our tenants. And it's been a wonderful side of our business and we're going to continue growing that side. And so for us, we always pivot when, you know, when you're in a tough market and I want to explain this to everyone, cause this is really good knowledge that I want to explain from my experience is Stephanie, when something's not working or the economy changes or interest rates are rising, whatever might be the case, just pivot, mm -hmm. pivot to something else, pivot saying, you know what, uh, I'm going to have to raise a debt fund because it's very challenging in this market to get financing. I'm going to ask for seller financing in this market more because it's more prevalent. And, and if you want a better price, okay, great. Seller finance it for five years. There's different things you have to, you really have to audible. And that's what a leader does. It's like a quarterback. Like if you look at Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, they always were able to audible when they saw a different formation. It's no different in commercial real estate. If you see something that's not up your wheelhouse, you got to change. And being open to change, Stephanie, is so important in business, especially mm -hmm. in commercial real estate, because well, like I said, we're a cyclical business. And right. if, you're, if you're a cyclical business, you can't just sit on your hands and say, well, I'm just going to accept that I'm not going to do business for a year or two. I'm going to accept what the economy is giving me. And so I don't believe in the word. I don't believe any contractions. I don't believe in can't, shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't. You start <laughs> using those around me and I just ignore you. Exactly. I just, I can't deal with, I, one thing is that I'm, I don't make excuses. Uh, I hate when people make excuses around me and that's just who I am and how I've had to start. Cause I'm self starter and I didn't come from money. Like you said, and I had to build this yeah. empire that I'm building and built. And so for me, uh, I don't believe in the word that you can't do it out there. You can do whatever you want. You just, like I said, I have a post on my social media. If you go to at the real Ben I did a post this past weekend, something inspired me to do this one post. And I talk about that, you know, pushing forward. I talk about a little bit about my career, but I talk about what you need to do to create success. And it's a lot of focus. It's discipline. It's, it's really showing up and doing things when people don't want to, yeah. you know, Stephanie, I am the king of working on a Saturday yeah. okay? and being in Newport beach, people in California don't seem to like to work on a Friday. Yeah, they don't like to work after 3 PM. I've been there and they're just out surfing by that yeah, time. It's, it's a little bit different here, out here, but for me, my work ethics never changed. And just because the weather is better, uh, me, the food's not as good as Chicago, but I could tell you that I do enjoy working on a Saturday. And so people say, well, why do you do that? I do that because it allows me to 
get ahead for the next week or clean up things I need to do or review a property or solve a challenge and have that space and time. And so I balance it. And so, and also I surround myself with great people that help me to be able to achieve what I want to achieve. And so there's a lot of things you could do, but if you follow me, you will see on a consistent basis, I will add value to you. Uh, that's my vow. As soon as I got on social media, Stephanie, which was a few years ago, I was never on social media. I was on LinkedIn. You're and on LinkedIn and, and nothing else. I was on LinkedIn. You know, Jeff Weiner's from Chicago. He's done an amazing job growing that company. And I have to commend him. And we've done marketing on LinkedIn. And, and I have a newsletter we've been writing for almost 25 years now. But at the end of the day, uh, I got on social media a couple of years ago and I said, my staff said, yeah, I got on social media. I'm like, what's that about? And they're like, oh, I got Facebook and Instagram, TikTok. And, and I, I was on and I got on it and we've grown our following. But what I love about it is creating impact and giving knowledge and nuggets of information to help someone that wants to get in our business or wants to know about how I do it. You know, I talk a lot about health and wellness. I'm very big into my health. I work out every day. Uh, I work out with the trainer five days a week here in California. And it's important to me, my health. You know, one thing, Stephanie, that I tell people, they're like, well, you know, you travel out then, or you look at deals or this. And if you're a broker, or any service out there, you're a principal. One thing that's really important is how you take care of yourself it's on the road and whether you're in the office and what are you putting in your body? You know, one thing I do is I collect wine and I make it very known. And, but I don't drink anymore. I stopped drinking about a year and a half ago. I haven't had a drink. And I, once I did that, Stephanie, it changed uh, just my energy as I get older. And so one of the things is listening to your body, listening to your emotions, understanding who you are. The, one of the things that's really important is to get to know yourself. You know, see what triggers you, see what upsets you. These are things that happened in the past from your childhood that I continue to work on too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, being in commercial real estate and business is more than just understanding how to value a piece of real estate, how to negotiate, how to understand a purchase and sale agreement, how to understand what a phase one environmental report is, how to understand a survey, how to underwrite and, and, and anything else that surrounds commercial real estate. It's more than just that to create success and discipline and longevity in the business. It's your health. It's your mind space. It's how do you interact with people and, and marketing and all these other things. It's a very holistic approach to create longevity in this business. And so when people think, well, if I just become an expert at one thing, I'll be successful. Yeah, that will help you. But it's more than that. It's like, how are you showing up in life? Mm -hmm. How are you showing up at your office? How are you showing up on the phone? And so if you can ask yourself that question, Stephanie, you'll see a lot of success in what you do. Right. That was something that no one taught me. I had, to, I had to go through my own journey, my own process of saying, how do I change and become better? How do I communicate better with my employees? How do we deal with people working remotely and hybrid, which is a big topic. And yes. so for us, that I'm proud of is that we do a playbook on our employees. You know, one thing that we did at Alliance that were different and why a lot of people are attracted to work for our company and be involved with us is that we help employees design their perfect life that aligns with the company. And we did that. We started that about two years ago. And it was really important for me because I couldn't figure out, Stephanie, how do I deal with this remote hybrid workplace? Everyone's in different offices. Uh, some people are working from home. Uh, which I can never do. I think that's so challenging working from home. But a lot of people do it now, and especially post-pandemic. It's become more popular, more in demand, yeah. especially more people are like, I kind of like enjoy, I enjoy working from home, Stephanie. So I'm going to continue to do it. And when I go look for a job, I'm going to demand that that's part of it. So that's another thing going on in, <laughs> in our world, which is interesting. I've always been an office guy. We had this osmosis. We had a water cooler. We had a kitchen. Yeah. We had conversations. We got to know each other personally. There's nothing better than human interaction. That's why I, I love going to see our properties, see lenders, investors, whoever, even where I am now in, in life in commercial real estate, because I, that's how I learned the business. You know, I'm a phone guy. 
you know, there are a lot of people like text and text is great and email and everything. But if you want to deal with Ben Reinberg, you got to have a conversation. You, you got to pick up the phone. Yes. I am a phone person. I, I get upset when I can't talk to someone. You right. Know, I, if, if, if me and Stephanie are going to have a conversation, I'm picking up the phone, I'm calling her. Uh, I, want her I wanted to hear how I feel. I want to be able to listen to and see how I can help Stephanie. You yeah. lose that on text. The, the emotion, people take things out of context and the That's list right. goes on and on. So for me, um, communication is so big. And so what we did is we said, okay, so we hired a company called Designing Genius, which is phenomenal. So anyone out there that doesn't know it, it's an incredible company. And we use Designing Genius. And what we do is we do a playbook on all our leadership team and all our employees, Stephanie. And what that's allowed us to do, it's to design the life that our employees want and the company to align itself with that employee. And so what I found, it, let's say you're in acquisitions, right? Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to make 250 calls in a week and you made 190 for that week. And we're going to say, what happened? Well, you know, I, I'm not eating well. You know, I said on my playbook, I want to improve my eating. I'm not sleeping well. Okay. So my energy's down and I'm not focused and I'm not producing letters and 10 and the things I need to, to go under contract. And I'll say, okay. And we look at all these and we, every week we go over the playbook with our employees. I go over my leadership team, leadership team goes over with their departments. And what ends up happening is you start realizing because your personal life and your business life, Stephanie, mirror each other. Yeah. They impact each other. You have an issue in personal life. It's going to impact you in business issue in business is going to impact you personally. That's just the way the world works and the way the mind works as well. And so for our employees, we'll look at it in that example. I'll say, what happened? Well, I haven't been sleeping while I've been up at night. And I, and I tell my employees, like, push your electronics far away from the bed where you're sleeping because the blue light and, and, and because also when you get up at night, you don't want to immediately check your phone and people go on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok right. and start scrolling and then they can't get back to bed. It doesn't serve you. So I always say this thing is, is this, this iPhone or the Android or the Samsung that you have can be evil at times. So my suggestion to everyone is keep it away from your bed. Okay. And with our employees, we look at it. I mean, one of the things I teach is have a morning routine, have an evening routine. The first 22 minutes of your day is so important that people don't realize in the last 20 of your day, how you wind down to get ready for bed is so important. And that way you have more energy, you're a better communicator. And so every morning I start off the same, I meditate, I might say what I'm grateful for. I might text three people, which I do on a frequent basis, and I'll say, Stephanie, I'm so grateful for being on the show. Thank you very much. It was such a pleasure to meet you. That's good stuff to start the day with. Or And I start with intention. What am I going to do today? So today I coached a friend of mine for an hour this morning. I went to go work out with my trainer. I'm on uh, this show with you now. So my intentions are set. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing after this, okay? And so I set my intentions and in between, if I want to meditate at lunch, whatever, you know, I might do that. I might do something to clear my mind. And then at night I do the same thing. I might journal, uh, I meditate and I just do things to really create space for myself mm -hmm. and throw out that what that means is I really time block during the day. I give myself space to be able to think. When I can think, I can create great things in this life and impact others, employees, leadership team. So it's important. Give yourself time to some space to think. Just think That's about right. like, what's going on. How did you handle that situation? How can you do things better? And so when I look at commercial real estate, especially as challenging a business we're in, and it'll always be that way. It's a marathon business, by the way, everyone. It's not a get rich quick business. Right. Believe me, I've been in it for almost three decades. It's not that type of business. You want to get rich quick business, don't get in this business. <laughs> <laughs> I say that tongue in cheek, but it's true. So what you need to consider is, okay, well, if I'm going to survive and this is my career, what I want, what do I need to do to, to work on myself? Because you got to take that holistic approach or, or you won't last. The business will suck you up and eat you because it's mentally challenging. You'll go through deals. Deals don't work out. Maybe you're selling a deal if you're an investment sales broker out there and 
guy's in a 1031 exchange and he doesn't perform. You got to go put it back on the market or sell it again. And it's a process. So how you personally deal with your emotions and how you communicate with others is so critical in this business. It is. And when I see people that communicate well and manage their emotions, sky's the limit. I've had more young men and women come through my door and I see them just thrive in the business, have their own businesses or go work for different folks. And I see them thriving and it's that common ingredient of they manage their emotions, they communicate well, and they take care of themselves. And so- And I love that you focus so much on this because it, it is so true. I, I see agents and brokers coming into the business and you can tell they need that commission. They need it so bad that it's coming through in all their actions, everything they say, they're just screaming desperation and you want it to happen, but you know, deep down that, you know, this buyer's not going to be able to perform. And you know, you're, you're the person that's, I mean, but we, we see that all the time because people don't take care of themselves or they don't, you know, keep themselves uh, calm and so forth. Then before we, I, I want to go into this, if, we, if you don't mind today, I want to know, you know, you are probably getting to this point, 5,000 deal potentials a day. I'm sure, you know, somewhere around that number. How do you know, or how do you decide what are those deals that you buy ultimately? Well, I've been doing this a long time. I mean, I can review a deal in seconds compared to someone that's has been in business a long time or right. hasn't done as much deals. It, like I said, it's a marathon business. It's just, it's just osmosis. It's, it's, it's looking at deals and seeing, I looked at a deal this morning and I said, "Ugh, that, you know, yeah. rent roll had uh, a, a bunch of one year options. One of mm -hmm. the tenants had it in perpetuity, like since for the, and I'm like, oh, we're not doing that deal. We'll never mm -hmm. add value. So there's things that you could look at that kind of trigger the decision where it's like, no, or, you know, it's a very rough area. It doesn't meet our criteria. No, next. I use the word next a lot. <laughs> and one of the challenges that people have that are novices or not a lot of experience, or maybe they're younger in the business, is the ability to say no. Nope, doesn't work. Because yeah. what they don't realize, and this is part of the growth and, and some of the learning you just said as well, you know, when eight, just to get back to your point before I get deeper into this, yeah. you mentioned that, you know, uh, brokers out there uh or you know agents or whoever out in the universe in commercial real estate or any type of real estate is when they're really pushing for a sale and everything it's because what happens is is that they weren't taught well how the business runs they didn't understand patience they don't understand that it's a marathon business they don't understand that uh you know you have to really understand the deal to sell the deal and learn about the deal. And so when a deal's not selling, you know, you have to look at yourself. But the other thing is, is that you want to create abundance. You want to have multiple buyers. You want the ability to, in that example, now we have multiple buyers, but you want to understand what you're selling and have integrity in the sales process. And again, that goes with communication, working on yourself, how you come off is important in how you communicate. So you want to act from inspiration, right. not desperation. And that's okay. a big deal. If you're younger in the business and learning, that's important. Work from inspiration and, and keep building your network and your knowledge. And so to get back to your question and your point with all these deal flows we see is we look at the real estate fundamentals. We look at the credit worthiness of tenants. We look at the areas. We look at demographics. We look at market rents. We look at absorptions. We, we look at, you know, how do we get into the property? How do we get out of it? Um, mm -hmm. And it depends on the asset class. Every asset class has different underwriting standards. You know, industrial is different than medical office. Uh, Self-storage is different than all of them. Hotels, uh, general office, you know, retail. We own retail. It's a whole different animal. It's changed drastically retail over the last 20 years. So Stephanie, it depends on the asset, but a lot of it is just showing up every day and learning and growing and working on your craft and being dependable. Yeah. And if you continue to learn and grow and listen. And the other key is the reason why I can get through deals quickly is because I'm a good listener and I ask a lot of questions. I will ask the broker or the principal selling us the property or the portfolio we're buying is I ask questions 
And why are you selling? You know, what's going on? Tell me what's happening. And then we assess it. And for me, it might be the back of a napkin because that's how I learned on I would have a napkin. I quickly write and say, all right, this makes sense or it's way overpriced or the cost of capital is so expensive out there. Like, how is this going to trade at a five cap when the cost of capital is nine? Right. It doesn't make sense. And so you could just look at deals and you have to get through deals quickly to become great in acquisitions. And it's not for the faint of heart, this business. Okay. Um, I've unfortunately got to see some bad conduct in the industry, which drives me nuts. And that's one thing why I'm doing a lot of teaching and coaching and mentoring. And that will continue to grow because I want to teach the business the right way. I love that. And Thank I, you for that. Thank well, you for just because look, commercial real estate's a tough business. When I got into it, I was 21 years old. And let me tell you, in 1999, a bunch of old white guys didn't want to see a 21 year old female come and kick them in the you know what's right? right. So, right. you know, we had I had to defend myself constantly. So, no, I love that you care enough about this industry to share back and help everyone else be great at it well because here's what ends up happening is that deals don't get done yeah okay? uh attracting tenants don't happen and so we're in this together yes that's how i look at it we're, it's not just ben reinberg is going to sit on top of the mountain no this is a we effort between making sure brokers are communicating well we want to be that sophisticated educated high class performing industry, commercial real estate. That's who we are. And yeah. that's who we should be always. And so we always should be acting with integrity. We should always have the best expertise. We should always be consistent. That's why our core values at Alliance is transparency, integrity, consistency, and expertise. That's why people sell us deals. That's why people, I don't put a deal under contract that I don't have a highest probability of closing. It's rare I pull out of a deal, my company does. Yeah through enough underwriting and understand how to value and that's integrity and so i see it because when we sell deals i see you know buyer ties up our property and doesn't close and doesn't have integrity and so you know part of the cleansing that's going on right now in this environment is it gets rid of the novices which i like i love challenging markets and when there's chaos because there's opportunities but you have to stay persistent and consistent and show up and keep pushing and grinding and not give up. I see more people in our industry that just say, well, you know what? I can't sell it for a five cap. Interest rates are moving. I can't stay in this business. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't do it. You don't want those people in the business. Right. You want people that are going to show up and work hard and grind, but also know how to underwrite and know that, hey, the market's changed. I'm not going to take a listing if you're a broker out there. One thing that drives me nuts, okay? And there's one company that teaches this, which uh, the founders, I think, are kind of getting out of the business. They're way older. <laughs> and hopefully, But the problem is that that legacy continues in that company. But one thing I don't like is that when people prop improperly value real estate, in my opinion, where they come out of the box to buy a listing. So they buy a listing, Stephanie, and they get it, and the seller sits and sits. Yeah. Now, I'm way too intelligent to know that game, and that's why I work with only certain brokers that sell our deals because we're on the same page and we've been doing business for decades and right. create, create markets and a lot of success. But if you're a broker out there, don't just like buy a listing. Educate the seller and be like, you know, you, wanna, you want uh, $10 million for this thing? It's really worth eight. Let me explain to you why. Right. And if some other brokers want to take that listing at 10 and then let that guy sit for a year or two until he realizes what to sell, you're doing him a favor. And guess what? That that favor, the universe will, will reward you for. You'll get more business out of it and you'll last a lot longer. That's right. And if you value something correctly and really put the time in and explain and become the expert, people will come to you in droves. I have a broker who sells almost all our deals. And that's how he conducts himself. And he doesn't need, he gets plenty of business. And he won't take a listing if he's going to put something on the market and it's not going to sell because it's a waste of his time. Right. And so for me, Stephanie, I never understood that principle. It's like, let me just get a listing. So I show my boss I'm getting listings, but it's not going to sell. Well, it's not putting money in your pocket. Once right. you better off be, uh, you know, what? let's talk about this because this is really important is time. 
we did a study in our office and it was just an example. It's like, say the average lifespan is 77 years old. I know it's older now. This was an example we did with our human behaviorists in our company. And I'm 54. So I got 23 years times, you know, I 52 weeks. I got a little under 1,200 weeks left of my life. Mm. So where, where are you going to spend your time and who are you going to spend it with, Stephanie? That's what you have to ask yourself. So if you're going to waste time taking listings or doing things that aren't appropriate or maybe uh, not conducting yourself in the best light, is it worth it? I don't care if you have double the amount of weeks I have. Yeah. Life's short. And so people need to understand that there is a tremendous amount of value in your time. Time is your most precious asset, the most valuable right. asset. And so if you're out there and you're a broker and you're selling a deal, why waste your time? That's right. And and, and look at yourself and say, I got to take my ego out of this because my ego is saying I got to get listings. No, no, no. You can get, you can get listings. But get get listings are great where you know you could sell and offer value. And all ties back to what I teach my investors. How are you adding value to everyone you meet? How are you adding value to the marketplace? That's right. And you want to be successful in commercial real estate because this is the C C R E power hour that we're talking here today, is you need to create value for people. That's right. That's that's how you're going to make the big bucks in commercial real estate or any industry. No, and I'm so glad you talked about that because even in the beginning of this year, one of my goals was, look, I know how to make plenty of money and be happy. But one thing that I cannot do is ever make more time come back to me. And so I told my team and I told, you know, people that work closely with me, look, money can come and go, but I'm not going to waste my time because I can never make it back. You know, you just can't. And so, you know, that's a big thing. But when people get into this business, they want to be put on the map. But if you're putting yourself on the map with overpriced junk, you're giving yourself a really bad reputation right out of the gate. I mean, period, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's brokers out there and companies we do business with and, you know, they market it to thousands of people and they come out of the box really aggressive. And then they say, okay, well, they're going to, and then they reprice it and they're constantly repricing it. And so we see deals from certain brokers. We don't even write on those deals because again, it goes back to time and it's a waste of time, Stephanie. So for me, yeah. um, I think as you age, especially in this business, you really, your, your, your smell test or your, <laughs> your picker as, as they your call it, you know, the picker, like how you, how you pick men and women for relationships, yeah. the same thing, you know, your picker gets stronger and better as you age. With that being said, uh, your picker would definitely improve as you age in the business, but be very sensitive of your time for everyone out yeah. there. And it doesn't matter whether you sit in my role as a principal, you're a broker, and that could be investment sales, leasing, whatever you're doing, a tenant rep, it could be you're an architect. It could be you're an appraiser. It could be you're an accountant, attorney, whatever it is, whatever your niche is in commercial real estate is look at your time. Where are you spending it? How do you want to spend it? And how do you want to design your life? And that's what we do for our employees is, is creating that where they can design their life. And so everyone in my company adheres to our core values. And they also have, we have a code of con conduct, how they, how they treat others and how they, because as I wind down my career, I want my legacy, Stephanie, to carry with me of That's what right. Alliance means out in the universe, especially in commercial real estate. So these I are all. Things that I'm, I'm very, very grateful that you took your time today and dedicated it to the audience and the listeners of CRE Power Hour and so forth. And you mentioned this early on, on the show, but You've got a television show coming out. So when should we expect to be looking for that to, to be airing? It's a good question. I'm, I'm asking the same question, too. It's in production. We just okay. filmed our first five episodes. For all I know, I had a podcast the last couple of years called Ben Reinberg. I own it. It's now becoming a show. The first season is on leverage. And so we are bringing on incredible guests, celebrities, billionaires from around the country. It's in person. And it's incredible. It's, it's a lot of fun. We're... We ask them what is leverage and we get into it and we get into different content with them. So we have a set of shows and then 
when you watch it, folks, what it is, is you're going to see me explaining a lot of the things that these folks have said so you can be educated and I can provide you value. I love it. It's, it's going to be something very unique. So stay tuned. It's Ben Reinberg hyphen. I own it. Uh, it'll be on one of the networks. We'll definitely let you know when it's ready to. Yeah. And definitely we'll get it out to the audience too. So yeah. Ben, thank you so much for your time. Right. We'll definitely have you back when Lisa Marie's out of CCIM yes. and I'll connect you two on some Reno deals. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good, Stephanie. And it was real privilege to be on here and, uh, and look forward to connecting with your audience. And if you want to uh, follow me, I'm all on social media, Instagram at the real Ben Reinberg. Uh, you can go to benreinberg.com. We're redoing that website. You can go to alliancecgc.com if you're looking to network with us, do business with us, whatever service you're in, or if you're a broker, we're looking to fill assets for the new Alliance Medical Property Fund. Love to work with you if you're out there and you want to sell us a deal. And then if you like to invest passively, uh, feel free to log on, click invest with us, and we'll reach out to you and we can help build wealth for you and your your family and create a legacy. So we do that as well, Stephanie. Love it, Ben. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thanks all.